to our Thursday live stream. So today we decided that we would move into the big room because obviously the puppies are growing and they need more space. So we came down here and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so as you can tell, let's see if you can see them. We've got a bunch of four and five week old, hi Goofies. And this is the first time they've been in this room. So let's see how they are. Come here guys, hey, let's pee on the pee pad. So you can see we've got pee pads. Basically the whole floor is covered with something, partly because the floor is slippery. So it is laminate flooring, which can um, be slippery for little puppies. And so in order for them to be able to walk around and have a good grip, we have to put stuff down. So we have blankets and hi mama and pee pads so that hopefully, and of course we got one pooping already and two pooping already. So now we got to stop and pick up poop. Um, and Alexis, I did not even have time to bring over um, anything. So hold on, this is puppy life, right? All about peeing and pooping and sleeping and eating. Um, I used the last one this morning on that roll. So that's Little Heaven and Hulk, if you guys can see. And you guys don't go in the poop. Hey, she, she's trying to go potty. Over there, though. Over there, over there, over there. Here. And then, um, I don't know if they can see that far, but over there we had... <laughs> Hold on, guys. How far? I can, I can move it. For what? Oh no, it's fine. I okay. they're not over there anymore, so it's fine. Hey, baby, you need to go over there. They will when put it down. All right. Okay, I'm gonna give you that. And then, I'm gonna set that there. All right, let's try this again. And um, so, some of you guys might be wondering, there are seven puppies and not six. And normally, uh, we had six puppies. So we have an extra puppy here, and she is the big bully. Come here, Mama. Hey, hey. be nice, be nice. Um, and that is because we had something we uh, didn't really talk about last week. Um, it was a little too fresh, and we really didn't um, Fill up to talking about it, but the day after uh, Diamond gave birth, um, her puppy did not make it, and um, that was a very traumatic situation for for Diamond, of course, for all of us. And I know we talk about like as a breeder, it's fun, it's great, but there's a lot of hard times as well, and a lot of heartache and difficult decisions. And so um, Diamond was very, very upset. Like she was so mad and sad and crying and running through the whole house because I had to take the puppy and she didn't know where it was. Um, so after two days of moaning and crying and trying to steal everybody's puppy, we... Hey, we're talking serious stuff over here. Um, we had already reached out to another breeder to get a puppy and to hopefully add to our breeding program, um, but she wasn't quite ready to leave her mom yet. However, she was a litter of four, and so um, I'm really close friends with uh, this breeder. Her name is Julie, and um, so we drove out and picked this little girl up at four weeks old, and um, that really changed Diamond because she instantly took to her and is nursing her and now that's her puppy and she thinks that <laughs> she should still protect her even though she's five weeks old now and um no one can touch her <laughs> that's why she's not in here because she gets very very protective so we solved the problem by getting her a puppy everyone laughs because i bought her a puppy which i did i bought her a puppy but i bought all of us a puppy um, so that's why you see her, and we don't have a name picked out yet, so hopefully you guys can help us with that. Come here, Mama. Hi. Hi. She says, I'm going over there. 
Um, so that's the story about that. And here she comes. Here she comes. Hi, mommy. Oh, really? Really? Um, so anything at this point? Oh, are we good? No. Okay. Oh. Uh, are any of these babies going to be toys? Mm, no, probably not. Um, they're all a lot bigger than what I would see as a toy. So no, I mean, the two little blacks are kind of small. They know their mom's usually is over there. Come here. Um, but no, minis, uh, a couple standards. No toys in these guys. I think. She looked stuck. She's trying to figure out a way. Um, so I need a name for this little black and white girl right here. If you guys have any ideas, please put it in the comments. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the new puppies in a minute, and they um, are going to need a name as well. So we will talk about that shortly. And as you can see, the little bitty ones are not as active as the older ones and if you remember last week whenever we did this they were all pretty much sleeping and that's what these guys are still doing because literally it's like overnight there are all of a sudden puppies and not um, little sleeping potatoes as some of you guys called them and so that's why you'll see the smaller ones that are still real lazy and just sleep pretty much all of the time and then the older puppies are all over the place getting into everything huh chewing on me and um really, really active, but in the next couple of days, uh, Bella's puppies will start to really um, get pretty active and be more, hey, quit beating up that puppy, uh, more rambunctious like the rest of them. You be nice, you be nice, you be nice. Um, so, we do have questions. Okay, go ahead. Um, when will Bella's puppies be up for offer, are they four weeks old yet? They turn four weeks old tomorrow, and um, I will be offering them sometime this weekend. I'm not sure if it will be tomorrow, just because I haven't done their video yet, and I always like to do a video before I offer the puppies to the list. Um, so it'll be sometime this weekend. I'm not really sure yet, but they for four weeks tomorrow. We have a whole bunch of name suggestions. Yay! For our little Missy? Yeah. All right, let's hear them. I'll read, I'll, maybe all of them. <laughs> uh, Nova, Zuma, Stella, Faith, Emerald, Jasmine, Jewel, Jenna, Gemma, Ruby, uh, Jayla, Um, it sounds like some of them are going off of like with Diamond, how we have the Jewel and Ruby. Those are cute. Yeah. And um, Gemma's cute too. Likes you a lot. Do you have any that stand out? I like I like Nova. Nova. I like Nova a lot. That's a super cute name. Nova and Nala. Chase likes Nova. Chase likes Nova. Do you want to be a Nova? Hey. I think that's a super cute name. Nova. Hi, baby. Nova. Is that your name? Is that your name? Huh? Is that your name? Do you want to be a Nova? Huh? Hi, babies. Hi, babies. Are you stuck over here, baby? She, no, she went over there. You want to stay with me? She's going to throw up with you. Um, okay. I think we can... What do you think? I think Nova. All right. Nova it is. <laughs> Who picked Nova? Did they... Liz. They... Liz Lauren. <laughs> you win! <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Okay. Be nice. You're such a bully. You are a bully. <laughs> Heaven has such an active alter ego. <laughs> hey, that's her. That's her, huh? Do we know their eye colors? Yes, 
We know everybody is by colors in here. Um, Heaven is the little white girl, and she has blue eyes. Little Nova that we're going to be keeping, she has a party eye and a blue eye. And then, <laughs> hey, where's some? Oh, here they are. And then Mr. Hulk, he's got two blue eyes. And his little brother, Hercules. Oh, <laughs> Hercules has a blue eye and a party eye. Hi. No. Did I say that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. A blue eye and a part yet. I forgot. And then, hey, quit being mean. You've got one of the puppies. Yes. And so there's two black and whites. They look almost identical, except one of them is bi eyed and one of them is brown eyed. And I have you've got the bi eyed. The bi -eyed and I have the brown eyed. And I don't remember which one's which, um, but there's hey. Izzy and yeah. Isla and. Iris? Iris, yeah. And so, I don't remember. I'd have to look on the paper of who's who. And then Little Miss Red is the last one, and she has two blue eyes. And, oh, and Rue's puppies open their eyes. Um, I'll get them out in a little bit, but they're both gray and white boys, and they both are blue-eyed. They're easy to tell. They're really bright blue. Um, we have a question about Nova. Okay. Um, so Christine asked if she was going to be on the wait list. She said it wasn't very clear. No, Nova's going to be staying here. That's the plan, hopefully. As long as she turns out, she'll be staying here. So um, she'll be added to our family. So we'll have a Nova and a Nova. If she doesn't stop beating everybody up. Huh. And she is... Five weeks old. Hey, that's not nice. Here, join us. <laughs> and are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Are you guys are you guys making a show for everybody? No, don't eat my shoes. Um, 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 um. I was going to. I had something I wanted to talk about. My paper's all upstairs. Um, I know a lot of you guys talked about like maybe a video on puppy proofing and um, also some training and things. And so I can do that. It's just hard to do it while we're doing these sessions because it's obviously all set up for puppies and then I need to either move my camera which is going to be hard or rearrange everything so um, I thought for the puppy pooping we could kind of talk about that just even on here because um, we don't need a video to really explain like what it is what it means and, and how you guys should go about it but um, basically if you guys have children then you know the whole toddler stages and like you have to raise everything up so that the toddler starts walking and they don't get into everything, they don't stick things in light sockets, um, they don't pull things off of shelves, that kind of thing. And so it's pretty similar with a puppy because you gotta remember a puppy's gonna be able to jump up so they're gonna be able to get onto your coffee table, at least put their front paws and pull things down, get underneath, get in cabinets. Um, and so cords, electrical cords, anything that's in their reach needs to get moved because if you don't, they're going to chew it. Um, so that's first thing is obviously get everything up out of um, their reach and then make sure that you are ready with puppy gates, puppy pens, um, even if it's just the gates that you can block off the, the entrance to rooms so that you can really keep their space confined. Um, this is why we have this room here. It's all open. It's connected to our kitchen and um, our living room, but we can put up the gates and they're still here, but there's nothing they can get into. So there's nothing that's going to um, harm them or they can chew up that's going to matter. And that way we can still keep a close eye on them, but we're still close enough to be able to interact with them hey, as well. Um, and so that's a really important thing. So whether it be in your kitchen or um, 
in your laundry room or wherever it is that you can put them so that you don't always have to watch their every move is really good because <laughs> I'm gonna move my shoes. Um, because that way you can eat dinner without worrying about where's the puppy, what's the puppy getting into, and um, know that they're still safe. So and that's a little bit about puppy proofing, um, making sure everything's up, making sure that you have an area that you can block off a puppy pen if you don't have an area. Um, a puppy pen is a great <laughs> uh, is a great alternative, and there's a lot of different kinds of puppy pens, puppy areas. But the one I like is the one that I have on my website, and it's under the, um, the puppy supplies list. And the reason I like it, it's from Petco, is because the, the bars are really narrow, and um, also they're vertical, so the puppies can't climb it. Um, some of the, the puppy gates that you see, they can literally put their paws up and climb over, and a lot of puppies do learn to climb, and so if you have the vertical bars, they can't. Um, but some of the vertical bars are really far apart, and so they can squeeze right through. Um, we have one right here behind this camera, and the bars are too far apart. So we literally have two gates. We have that one because it's already mounted, and then we have a little one that's behind it so that they can't um, squeeze through. And I think most of you probably saw a video that's pretty old now that um, the puppy got stuck and was going through because they can push right through it. So those yep. are some um, tips for you guys. We have some questions. Okay. Are there expected litters in July? Uh, yes. End of June and beginning of July. Uh, yes. Uh, do plants need to be out of the way as well? Oh yes, for sure. In fact, I have a video on one of our puppy owners sent us that's really funny. Um, and the puppy literally grabbed the whole planter, dumped the plant out all over and took the, the pot outside to chew on it. And some plants are poisonous. That's another thing to keep in mind is some plants are poisonous. Hey. Um, and so you definitely want to keep them up and out of their way. Uh, can you talk about future litters and the summer breeding? Um, summer breeding isn't necessarily something that I know yet because it depends on each girl. So um, just because um, they last time came in the season at a certain six months or seven months doesn't mean that'll happen this time. So for future stuff, I don't know when um, we'll have another um, breeding um, with the exception of Dakota because she's in season right now. Um, but as far as upcoming litters, Sasha is due from Trout. Sasha's a black and white, uh, mini blue eyes, and she um, was bred to Trout, who's a gray and white mini, um, who's blue eye party eye. And then Cessna is um, a black and white, mm, I haven't measured her in a while. She's pretty close to standard, so she's borderline mini to standard. She's brown eyed and she was bred to Simba. Yeah, she was bred to Simba. So those are the two confirmed pregnancies that I know of, um, and then Dakota's in season. And Sasha's due first, she's due at the end of this month, and then um, Cessna's due, hey, quit chewing on me, at the very beginning of the July, end of June, July. When will Rue and Lily's litters be ready for the list? Um, so we don't offer them till they're about four weeks old and um, Rue's puppies are two weeks old and Lily's are one. So you've got two to three weeks still before anything on them. Uh, can you talk a little about your experience when you started showing dogs? What would, what do you look for in a puppy that you would keep or give to someone that would show a clique? Um, that's a great question. So when we got involved in showing, we didn't know anything about showing. We had never done it before. Um, so we just went out and watched. We didn't even um, participate. And that was a good experience. So if it's something that you're thinking that you would want to start showing or get out there, the first thing you want to do is go to a show. And so I don't know where you're located, um, but if you go to UKC's website, there's a list of all of the upcoming shows. And of course, I'm assuming everything's on hold right now. Um, but that's a great way to get out there and kind of just get a feel for things. Um, and that's what we did. And then after, um, 
after my breeder convinced me that we should get out there and show, it was really embarrassing. Like, really, we had no idea. But that's why it was really good that we went and we watched. He clicked me on me. Um, because that gave us an idea of what to practice on because these are small dogs, so they're going to go on a table. So you're going to walk around the ring just like you would see on Westminster or anything that's on um, TV. So you literally walk around the ring, but the dog has to be on a certain side. And then um, you'll come around and then you'll put the dog on the table. And the way they put the dog on the table is, you know, the judge is on one side facing and you're going to put the dog up. So again, you want to learn all of this stuff before you go out there because you don't know what you're doing. Um, but the judges with UKC are really nice and very patient and they'll work with you and they'll show you and hopefully your breeder will help you as well. But Mr. Duke's going to, Mr. Duke's going to be the one. So, um, when you stack a dog, putting a dog on the table is called stacking them. And so like you can see, I'm suspending him in the air, which obviously is not hurting him at all. So when I go to pick a puppy, I do just what I'm doing to him. Because I want to see, when you suspend a dog in the air, can I see that? Yep. Um, you can see right there if his top line, which is his, his back here, if it was straight, if he's got a dip in it, you'll be able to see because everything is just freestanding. So you can see how his form is. And would you stop chewing on my shirt, Missy? I'm practicing. Um, but this little boy, Duke, here is an amazing little puppy. Like, he would be a great dog to be in a show home, but of course, you know, he's spoken for. Um, and so you want to pull the back legs and just kind of see, like if a dog literally will stand there the way you put them, that's a great thing. Like you can see right here, like he's just standing for me. Good boy. That's a very good boy. And you want to also practice showing their teeth. So whatever you're showing a dog, you have to show the judge their teeth because they want to make sure that they have a nice scissor bite. And so, um, at this age, you can start practicing and you'll just even just touch them whenever you're sitting on the couch or um, any time that you're um, playing with him and just make him stop and look at his teeth. And if you do this now, obviously at eight weeks when you get a puppy and keep doing that, you won't have a problem. I'll tell you, when we started, we weren't ever thinking we were going to show, so we didn't practice this kind of stuff in the very beginning. So it's really embarrassing when your dog's squirming all over the place because they don't want to show their teeth. Um, but so that's some of the things you're going to practice and, and look at. But for me, this is one of the biggest things because I pick a puppy at this age. And so I want to see how it stacks. I want to see how it moves around. I want to see the shape of its head, obviously the mass, the markings, that type of thing are all super important to me. Um, ideal, like out of all of these puppies, of course, these guys, I wouldn't judge yet, but all of these older puppies, um, Hulk is by far top quality. He's a really nice puppy, really nice. The white one's very nice, but she can't be shown, right? So I, I exclude her. <laughs> and then we got you, little Miss Spazzy. Huh. That's our dog. That's our puppy. That's our <laughs> Nova. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're talking about you. Uh, next question. Uh, do their toys need to be cleaned? Yes. Um, so yeah, definitely if they're the squeaky type of toys, throw them in the washer. I literally wash dog stuff every day. Hopefully you won't have to do that because you'll have one or two dogs. Um, but I wash every day, so you'll want to wash them and sanitize them. Anything that's hard, um, so hard plastic balls, their rubber bones, even the um, Kongs, all of that stuff, you can throw them in the dishwasher or you can soak them with hot water and clean them, but you definitely want to sanitize and clean everything because this is rolling all over the ground, in their mouth, um, probably in poop, who knows, but yeah, you'll want to do that. Um, what is your recommendation or suggestion if you have to leave your puppy alone for a long period of time? Um, example, seven hours straight. Um, Hopefully you don't have to do that at eight weeks because it's going to be really difficult for potty training and things for you. But if you do, then you're going to want to have them at least in some type of area, even um, like two ends of a hallway or a large bathroom, 
um, if you can put up a puppy pen, something like that, so that they can still get some play time and exercise, lots of play toys, lots of um, enrichment things to keep them busy. And if you have to be out for seven hours, at eight weeks, then you're gonna wanna preferably, I would say maybe litter box train, um, but you can use pee pads or the fake grass as well because he's not gonna be able to hold it for that long. So he's gonna potty in there, which means potty training outdoors is gonna be harder um, because every day they're in a pen for seven hours. Ideally, if you can, um, not everybody works close enough, but if you can come home for lunch, um, get them out that way and get some exercise, get them to go potty, and then that might help and maybe you wouldn't have to use the pee pads. The other thing is a family member, a neighbor, a neighbor's kid maybe is um, looking to earn a little extra cash, a dog sitter, something like that just so that you can get them out and they're not alone all of the time. How much separation do you encourage between puppies when you are getting from the same litter? like an hour a day or various activities on their own? Um, when they're getting two puppies? From yeah, the same litter? I believe so. Um, so if you're getting two puppies from the same litter, then you're gonna still wanna give them alone time every day with you and alone, alone, even though you, they have each other. Because what if there's something goes on and you just wanna take one puppy or you need to just take one puppy to the vets? Um, as far, <laughs> you better knock it off. You are not in charge. Um, but as far as how much time, you're gonna go slow at first because they've always been together. So you're gonna start off with 10, 15 minutes, three or four times a day, and you're gonna keep doing that. And every time you're gonna increase a little more, a little more, a little more. If, if I'm understanding them right, if, if that's not what you're asking, then um, put it in the chat and I can help maybe clarify that. But if it's two puppies, they still need alone time with you and alone time um, away from everybody. So you can help with crate training and potty training and separation anxiety. What is your thoughts on timing of getting a dog spay or neutered? Would you spay a girl before her first birthday? First um, heat, first before heat. her first heat. So I always tell everyone to go off of what your vet recommends. Oh, good morning. Um, but for me, I, um, I'm not a vet, obviously, so I say you oh. need to go off of their recommendations. However, if the puppy is small, then you definitely are going to have to wait a little while. Like I wouldn't spay before they were six or seven months old because their growth plates might not have closed up yet. <laughs> um, and then if they're bigger, you can do it as soon as your vet recommends it. It used to be that vets always did it at four months old, and now um, they've changed that to where they're recommending you wait even longer because of the growth plates and sometimes they're saying now it'll stunt their growth. So I, in my contract, it's by one year. So we recommend and require that the dog be spay or neutered before they're a year old or at least by one year old. And then as far as a female before their first heat, um, again, if the dog is, is big enough and they're not a small, small toy, it's definitely more convenient to get that out of the way and not have to deal with that um, and no accidents. So this breed usually will come into season for their first time between six and nine months, um, sometimes even 10 months, depending if they're a little smaller, but anywhere in between there. So if you have a really tiny one, you might um, not be able to spay her before she comes into season for the first time. Um, what personalities are you starting to see from Bella's pups? <laughs> Pretty much they sleep a lot. Um, hey, Alexis, I have an idea. I have the soft food right there um, that I soaked. Can you give that to me? I'll wake them up. Mm. They are playful. It was kind of like last week with, um, with Cashmere's litter where they just didn't really move that much and they weren't that active. Um, but they are starting to get active and that's why I want to do a video before I do the puppy offers when they are uh, awake and active because you can see a big difference when they're playing versus you know what that is. Um, so when the puppies are small, sh heaven smells, 
I soften up their food with a little bit of warm water just because it's hard for them to crunch and they're still learning how to eat dog food right now because they're nursing all of the time. So we just started introducing food uh, about four or five days ago to Cashmere's litter and then to Bella's litter we just introduced yesterday for the first time and they were like, what is this? Put it in their mouth and um, but anyways, once they eat, they get pretty um, alert and active. Of course, they'll poop, but they'll um, they'll wake up. So we'll see if we can let them eat a little bit. Not you. You guys are porkers. Let's see. Let's see. Um, and that way, maybe they'll wake up and you guys can see some other personality. Ha <laughs> ha. Tricked you guys. Tricked you. So you see the little Miss Red one's like, ooh, dinner, dinner, chow down. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see if they wake up. Hey, Mama. Look. She's like, no, we're tired. Ah, uh, you guys saw the food, didn't you? Here, stay here. Stay here. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go. They're gonna go tear it up. Hey, Papa. Um ready for the next question? Yeah, if I could talk in them same time okay I watched your potty training video what would you change if you wanted to train your puppy to use pads or a litter box in a designated space in your home or apartment um, so then of course anytime you're um, taking them to go potty it's not gonna be outside it's gonna be uh, in that area so you're gonna use the same command and you're just instead of taking them outside you're gonna take them to that area and it's gonna be the same reward, same positive reinforcement. Um, it's just instead of outside, it's into that area. And then if you have a specific room that you are going to have the puppy in whenever you're not watching the puppy or in a pen, then you're gonna to want to, um, if they're really young and they're gonna be in there for a while, you're gonna to wanna to put either the pee pads or the um, litter box in that area. And if that's not where you want them to go full time, then you're gonna put that, whatever it is that you're gonna be using, you're gonna to wanna to put that in the area where you're gonna always want it to be. So you, that way you're not moving it all over the place. Um, but if you have to, because you're gonna be gone, then you're gonna put it in one area and then move it to the other. It's just gonna be a little more confusing. You're smart, you found it, didn't you? Um, if, it'll be a little more confusing if you move it from area to area. So you can, if it is for litter box, then maybe have two of them and one in that area whenever you're not home and then one where you permanently want it. And that way, whenever they're old enough and you trust them, that you can um, remove the one. That makes sense. So everything else is the same. It's just instead of going outside, you're gonna take them to that area. Still with the crate training, you're still gonna wanna put them in the crate and take them to that specific area so that they learn there you go. That um, so so they learn that that's the area that you want them to go. <laughs> this little white one's a booger. <laughs> you can see how fat she is. She does not need to eat. Yeah. Are the hanging toys baby toys? Yes, they are. I buy a lot of baby toys um, because they have a lot of the crinkly sound and the little. Um, like, I don't even know what that is, but little bells or something inside of it. And so the puppies seem to love them and they're pretty durable. If Simba got a hold of them, they're not very durable. But for these guys, they're very durable and they hang really well because these little hooks are all from the toddler or baby section um, at the store. So Target, Walmart, anywhere I can, I pick them up, especially if I see them on Clarence. Um... What is your preference on coat color? Uh, my, I'm gonna say gray only because Kiko is my first and she was gray, um, so that's my go-to. But I like all of them. I, I think they're all very pretty and unique. But the light grays are—they just have my heart. Just because I Kiko. <laughs> okay, you guys are done. You're done too. <laughs> She's hitting the camera. Hey! It just went doing? all blurry. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> here, let's see if you'll leave. Come here, Missy. Come over here. Now that you ate, you're gonna wake up, huh? 
Now let's see if you guys can guess. Okay, let's see here. <sighs> what is Isla's personality so far? Who? Isla. I don't know which one's Isla. <laughs> little book. I, I don't remember who's who. My, the folders are right there. I don't know if I wrote on them. All of the puppies got weighed today, their nails got trimmed, and they all got dewormed. And um, I don't know if I wrote them on there. You didn't. Mm. Whoever asked that, tell me which one Zyla. I'm guessing the red. Okay, no more food. Yeah, you didn't write it on there. I, I don't remember. I would have to look it up. It's upstairs. Um, but if it's the red, she's so far, she is the most alert of the three. Isla is the red. Yeah, I kind of thought it was. She's just going to wake up right now. Um, but they're really just starting to develop that personality. So here they go. They're going to wake up now so you can see them a little better. Oh, that was a cute stretch. When do you think is a good time or age uh, to bring a puppy to daycare? Um, I would, <laughs> that was random. Um, I would recommend as soon as they allow you. So if they say it's once they've had all their shots, then, then that's when it is. But as soon as you can, the better, just because for one, it's going to get them away from you to help with separation anxiety and it's going to help with socializing. So they're going to be around all types of um, dogs and different ages and different sizes and different people. So that's really good for them as long as um, the daycare allows it. So as soon as they can. Um, I know you said feeding hard food naturally helps clean their teeth. Do you also brush their teeth or use dental cleaning agents in their water bowls too? No, I don't do any of that. When their teeth start to, especially on my older dogs, when their teeth start to get a little tartar buildup, then the best thing to do is to go get them a dental cleaning. So we do that. I don't have time for <laughs> teeth brushing of all these dogs. So I'm a... Uh, I'm a bad mom when it comes to that. Not that I don't say you guys shouldn't because obviously if you have one dog and you're able to, then start at eight weeks and do it. Um, but, oh, you want, you want to play. But I don't because I don't have time. Does this breed do well in a backpack, a doggy pack? Why would you pee on there? Why? Why, Why would you pee on there? Huh? Um, yes, we actually have people that we've sold puppies to and Alexis used to own a little pouch thing um, that would go to the front, which was really cool. And thank God this doesn't absorb. Um, so they have um, some hiking trails that one of our families um, puts their dogs in a backpack and they do great. We also have another family who has a backpack um, with a some type of clip and he, this dog rides on their Harley in the backpack. And um, Alexis used to have this little backpack that came to the front with a pouch, kind of like a kangaroo pouch. And um, she would have her puppy in that. And so they do well with it, especially if you start them off young. And they, a lot of them have the little hooks so that they can't fall and jump out. Um, how do the Alaskan Klikai do with raw food? Is it better for them than dry foods? Um, so I used to feed raw, and they do well with raw, but some of the raw and some dogs, not all, will um, have sensitive stomachs or have um, pancreatic issues, and so those are some of the things you just have to be aware of if your dog doesn't do well on it, and um, that would be the first thing I would cut out is the raw to see if that's maybe the problem. Um, but we used to feed raw. We fed raw for a couple of years. 
And then we had one dog who did develop pancreatitis, and so we stopped feeding raw. Um, but again, every dog is different, and a lot of them do well with raw. If you do raw, then you'll just want to make sure that you have a lot of natural bones for them because they need to be able to clean their teeth, and raw is um, really, really soft and mushy. We feed raw, just to go back to that, um, we buy raw now just because if we have a big litter of puppies and moms doesn't have as much milk or like Nala right now is she's just kind of a slow eater and for me to convince her to eat, um, I give her one patty a day along with her kibble. So she gets kibble every day, but I supplement her with raw just to help entice her to eat. Um, and then if my girls need a little more um, nutrients and calories, then I'll add some raw to it. Do you have an idea on size and eye color of the black and white pups? Yes. Um, so I'm not sure which one's which because my folder doesn't have their names. My names are upstairs. But one of them who's bi-eyed um, and the other, they weigh the exact same, by the way. They weigh two pounds. Um, I just weighed them today. They both weigh two pounds, and they are four weeks old, and one's going to be brown-eyed, and one has a blue, I'd say she's bi-eyed, but she may end up with a party in the one brown eye. Um, the one with the bigger eyebrows is um, the brown-eyed one. So the one that has more white eyebrows is the brown-eyed one. If you are looking at the pictures on my website, you'll be able to identify the names. Um, and then the one with the smaller white eyebrows is by eye. Do you recommend adding goat's milk to kibble? It's funny you say that. Um, <laughs> we just did that. Um, that's not a bad idea if, if you feel like they're becoming a picky eater or um, they don't want to eat the kibble, but just to add it because you want to soften it or something, I would say no, only because once you start introducing those things, you can create a very picky eater, and then they won't want to eat unless they have that stuff. So if you feel like they're kind of on the thin side and you want them to, to eat a little more or gain a little weight, um, then you can just, it's not something you want to do every day because it's very rich too, so you don't want to do it where they get diarrhea, um, and it's not going to be very much. But again, keep in mind that that once you start adding things in, you can definitely produce um, a picky eater. And then they'll what they'll do is they'll lick all the goat's milk off and they'll push the food out of the bowl. <laughs> Trust me, we know. <laughs> They're pretty smart. Do you think it would be okay to, uh, to alternate days to bring the dog to daycare and it staying home by itself? Or would that possibly cause anxiety? Um, no, I think that it's good. I mean, obviously not everybody can do that every day, go to doggy daycare. And, and plus, you want them to learn that it's okay to be at home alone. So you want to be able to do both. They aren't always going to get spoiled and go to daycare, but they're not always going to be left at home. So you, have to, you want to do a balance between the both of them. Um, and it's not going to cause separation anxiety because in the beginning, remember, at eight weeks old, they can't go to daycare. So you're already going to be working on giving them alone time, crate training them, teaching them that it's okay and that you're gonna come back every day. So hopefully by that time, you won't be already past the whole separation anxiety thing if you're consistent. How do Klikai act around babies? And I'm talking six months to 12 months and over. Um, most of them do fine from, from anybody that's gotten a puppy from us. I've never had a problem. In fact, we've sold um, several people, puppies, and then they had babies after, and I always get reports back of how the clique high are sitting over there, babysitting and watching, making sure that they're safe and okay. Um, so they're fine um, for ours. Again, er every dog is different. Every breeder raises their puppies a little differently. So I can only really talk about our breeding program specifically, um, because years ago, I remember reading that the clique highs weren't good with kids. And I was like shocked. I'm like, what do you mean they're not good with kids? Of course they're good with kids. They, ours are. But I think a lot of it has to do with how they're raised in the very beginning. And a lot of breeders, um, if they're not raised with kids, they don't know kids. And so then maybe they have a bad experience with kids. You never know. But in general, they seem to be just fine. Of course, you want to 
be careful in the beginning and just make sure that they're okay with the, um, the babies, but usually they're fine. Everybody's seeking out, huh? <laughs> that didn't help. They didn't wake up. They just went to sleep. They just went to sleep. Hey, don't you know there's a show on? Huh? Don't you know there's a show? <laughs> I think they're tired. Um, We're good. Oh, are we good? Yeah. Awesome. How many thumbs ups do we have? 29. 29. How many people are we have? On? 72. 72 people and only 29 thumbs ups. 31. Wait, you're done? What? No. Ethan wants to play video games, so he wants us to be done. Um, just kidding. He just asked if we were done because he wanted to hear. So, anyways, how many thumbs up? You 35. Guys, you guys know the drill by now, hopefully. 38. Uh, we obviously want the thumbs up because YouTube likes to see the thumbs up. So, if you guys could do me a favor and hit that thumbs up button, I would appreciate it. Um, and then, in a minute, we'll get you guys little babies and we'll show you some pretty, pretty new babies. Forty-three. <laughs> awesome. Some people are probably like going back and not um, live with us in the moment, so I will be patient with you guys. Um, so you can see a big difference between this little black girl, which is now called Nova, um, because she's obviously the most active and rambunctious, and that's because she's the oldest. So she is. Um, she can stay awake for a lot longer and um, definitely more outgoing and kind of a bully because she, she thinks she's the boss. Huh, you think you're the boss. And then these little ones are sleepy heads. You guys are sleepy heads. I have a few questions. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Okay. Do you have an Amazon wish list? No. Should I? <laughs> Um, no, I don't have an Amazon li wish list, but I'm on Amazon all the time. We buy things from them all the time, but no, I don't. Why are you asking? I'm just curious. Should I be sharing that with you guys so you know what you guys should be buying? Mm, she might be typing. Well, we'll go to the next question. If okay. she replies, I'll let you know. Okay. Um, can you tell which pups will be treat slash food driven before their eight weeks? Um, that's a hard question. I guess I've never really thought about that because usually our puppies leave here very, very food motivated. Um, partly because we feed them by litter. So if there's more than one puppy, of course, they feel like they have to um, eat quickly so that their siblings don't eat all their food. Um, so they seem to be food motivated all of the time. And I don't know if that changes over time when people get their puppy and they no longer have that competition for food. Um, but when they leave here, I would say probably every Klikai that we have is, I could be wrong, but when they leave here, it's different than when they go to a new home. Um, we train our anytime we're keeping a puppy we don't train with treats we train with dog food um and so that's the best way and that gives you like you know whenever you're feeding in the morning that you're going to do a training session for five minutes and when you feed in the evening you're going to do a training <laughs> session for five minutes and then that also helps if the dog um, is a quick eater so if they eat really fast then this is going to force them to slow down and so um they always seem to be food motivated and they always, they want to please us. Like that's the bigger thing is they want to please us. And so they want to make us happy to do what we want them to do. Uh, she said, yes, but also if you need extra supplies. And then someone said, I'm not sure who asked about the Amazon wish list, but I'd love to see one. Okay. That's a good idea. Um, I will put that together for you guys and we can talk about that next week. 
and maybe I could just share it. Um, I'm assuming I could probably share it in the description of the YouTube video that we're doing. So I will work on that. Um, that's probably a really good idea for anybody getting a puppy, even somebody who's not getting a puppy from us, just because um, there's a lot of things that people don't really think about that are important um, when raising a puppy, like nature's miracle. <laughs> Um, how much do they typically weigh when they get sent to their forever homes? Um, our puppies usually leave here right around four pounds. It depends though on the size. Like a toy is usually definitely under four pounds. Um, but most of my minis to small standards are three and a half, four pounds, maybe four and a half. Anything that's going to be a really big standard will be over five pounds. Um, but most are, I would say, let's just say three to five. Um, everybody's loving the idea of the Amazon wish list. Oh, that's awesome. I never then, thought of that. Um, here's one. Do you have to wait until a puppy is a certain age before taking it on runs with the understanding that they need to start slow? Um, no, I don't think you really need to wait. Of course, you want to make sure that you don't hurt um, their joints and their growth plates. So that's the big thing is making sure that they're not jumping in and out of cars and um, jumping over things when they're really young. But as far as just building up that stamina to be able to keep up with you to run, you can start as soon as you're taking them out because puppies, they're, of course, they're not gonna last long, five, 10 minutes and they're gonna be done. But um, the sooner you do it, the better. I don't see a problem with that. Like we tell the kids, go run with the puppies to get them tired. <laughs> so I don't see the difference. Let's see. What time is it so I could stay on top of 6.53. Okay, so we'll get the other puppies out here soon because these guys are all tired anyways. Oh, somebody said that you can add stuff to your Amazon wish list from other websites as well. Oh, really? Huh. Okay. That's good to know. <laughs> I started an Amazon wish list based on your new puppy supplies list. I'm hoping for a puppy shower. <laughs> right? Uh, what are the recommend recommendations for harnesses, sizes, and brands? Uh, so harnesses is a, a touchy subject because a lot of people love harnesses and, um, I personally don't and that's not to say they're not bad or they're not good but in our experiences unless you do a lot of research a lot of the harnesses are something for one that you don't want to leave on them all of the time and so you have to take it on and off on and off and I feel like at least in the past they can slip out of them um, and so that makes me very nervous because you got to remember this breed can be um a little shy and timid especially in the beginning so if a car goes by and the horn is blown or somebody's um alarm is going off they might get spooked and if they pull backwards they can come out of it so i personally don't use them i have asked on some of the facebook groups about harnesses um, because i did want to hear from other people to see what their take was on it and I do have a list of what other people were saying and what they were recommending, um, but I personally don't use them. And so I don't have, what? What? Who's <laughs> Nova? What? Really? Um, so I really don't have any insight to give you because I don't use them. I don't like them. <laughs> she doesn't either. Um, but what I use, and I'll show you guys, I personally use um, choke, choke, choke collars and they are the ones from dog, for dog shows. So they're very thin and I have one hanging right here and uh, two hanging right here. Um, Lexus, you have to tell me if I'm going to be, if they could see this. Yep. So you can see it's very, very thin, right? And it's called a show snake they call it sometimes they'll call it a snake but they it's a show choke chain and the reason i like to use a choke chain and a very thin one or a martingale there's also something called a martingale which is not made of choke um uh, metal material it's made of the 
the leash material, like a nylon, and I have one, but I think it's in my tub in the garage. Um, and it is really thin, but the way you use these is they has to be put on the dog. So if the dog's head is this, this it has to be um, coming out towards you. It has to be shaped as a P. So if you see that, can I see that? Yeah. So if you put it on them this way, so this is their head coming this way, that's wrong because it's not shaped like a P. But if you do it this way, it's shaped like a P. A P I to guess. you. A P to me. Whatever. It's that way, where this part's down and so it would be a P. Um, that's how it goes on. So then whenever you're walking the dog, it self-releases. So do you see how this just constantly releases down? And if it's the other way around, it doesn't release. So if you put it on correctly, the dog can never ever slip out of this ever so i know that my dog is always safe no matter if my 11 year old is walking it or um, a neighbor kid is walking whoever is walking i know that the dog cannot get out um, and so i use those and part of that is probably just because i was a show person and so we always had those and used them and so now now the puppies have taken over my spot huh um, so that's what I use, and that's what I always tell my puppy people that I recommend. Again, this is just what I use, what works for me, which you guys can definitely get a harness, look into harnesses, just make sure you read reviews on it, and make sure that they cannot slip out of them. That was a long answer to your question, sorry. <laughs> I also feel like, especially when you're doing potty training stuff, like we tell you put a leash on, get your puppy outside so that they um, can go potty outside. And what are you gonna do? Are you gonna use a harness sometimes and a collar sometimes? Because you can't just get it on and off real quickly. So I, we leave those on our dogs. Like they just have it on all the time. Um, and they also will have a regular collar, but anytime they're going on a walk, we hook on that. We don't hook on a, um, a regular collar. Are there any types of toys or balls that are dangerous for them due to material, not the size? Um, some dogs are, are definitely more destructive than others. So something that is made for dogs, but um, they can still... <laughs> uh, did you guys see her? <laughs> Heaven just rolled <laughs> off of here. Yeah, you could see it. Poor baby, what happened? Did you fall? Uh, sorry. Why are you eating my shoes? No. Sorry guys, I'm like all over the place today. Um, okay, back to the toys and bones and balls. Anything that is rubber that they can chew off and swallow and eat is obviously a hazard if they get to that point. So you won't know until you see that they're starting to destroy it. Um, as far as the stuffing, so toys, a lot of them can, they'll break these off, they kill the squeaker, they eat the plastic out of it. Are you She's okay? just trying to What? Now she went into the corner. Just pouting. What happened? Did you face plant? So, anyways, um, squeakers, the stuffing, mine kill a, a toy probably every day. Um, I've never had to take a dog to the vet for it. Of course, I always pick it up. I always get the squeaker out of their mouth. Um, but if you're gone all day, then you're not going to want to give them something that you know that they can destroy. Um, so you'll just have to be aware and you have to try it with each dog but they're made for dogs doesn't mean that it's safe for them to eat the plastic or eat the stuffing <laughs> but we buy a lot of our toys are baby toys and so we just keep an eye on it if they eat it <clears throat> throw it away is it okay to socialize a new pup with other young puppies that may have their first or second set of shots or should they only be with dogs that are fully vaccinated um this is this will just depend on if you trust and know those people. So if you trust that that puppy didn't come from a shelter that maybe was exposed to something or a not so clean breeder or even the family themselves aren't the cleanest, then stay away. But if you trust 
that that puppy has been um, not exposed to anything, we encourage you to try to get your puppy to interact with any and everybody you can as soon as you can. So we want you to do that, but just be aware of where that puppy came from, who the owners are, that type of thing. Silly question, how do they do with the Roomba? <laughs> um, they accidentally turn it on all the time. And at first they run from it, like they look and they run when they're little puppies and then they get used to it and they're fine. Um, Simba and Nala, they're, if, if everyone's loose, they're fine, they just ignore it. However, if they're in their crates and it goes up to their crate, they bark at it nonstop like they're gonna attack it. But when they're out of their crates, they just ignore it. Uh, you mentioned in a previous live chat that you taught one of your dogs to talk a lot, but <laughs> you don't recommend doing so unless you want a very vocal dog. How yeah. do you avoid that? Um, well, we, we specifically taught her the word speak, and um, so because we did that, she thinks that everything is speak, and so she doesn't stop. Like anytime she wants something, she barks. Anytime she <laughs> thinks that we want her to do that because we have a treat, she barks. So um, I think it's just a confusion thing for her because we um, originally taught her to do that. We praised her for doing that. We rewarded her. She got everything that she wanted whenever she did it because it was the beginning stages of teaching her that. So that's why I, I won't do that again. Um, but aside from that, I don't think it's you can avoid it or not um, have a vocal dog whenever you're talking Klee Kai because they are a vocal breed. But I intentionally trained her to talk, and now she thinks she should talk all of the time. That's the difference. But this breed in general is very vocal, so they're going to tell you all about their day. Um, it's just you don't want them to sit and bark every time you're trying to teach them to sit or down or stay. Nala does it with everything. <laughs> She'll sit, but she barks. She'll down, but she barks. She'll high five, but she barks. Like, I didn't want both. <laughs> or she'll do all three of them before you give her a treat. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, okay, wait, let me sit. Okay, let me down. Let me high five. Okay, let me bark. Dear, you mentioned in a previous, oh, hang on, wrong one. Um, I've heard okay. of ultrasonic toys or something like that that squeak for the dog but not for us. Do you have any you recommend? No. No? I didn't know that. <laughs> um, that's interesting. I did not know that. I'm curious if you find that, um, let me know and I'll do some research. Maybe I'll get one. I'll put it on my Amazon list and we'll check it out. Um, that, that's very interesting because they just literally don't stop squeaking um, the toy. Like until it's dead, they don't stop. So that would be interesting. We wouldn't even know they were destroying the toy. Hmm. Let me know if you have that information, share it with us so that we can look into that. Just curious on how they do on flying. Have you flown much with them in the cabin? Yes, um, they actually do fine. We've, we've flown with several from young, young puppies to adults, and um, they're fine. Of course, the younger they are, the more um, unaware of what's going on they are, but they are still really good. Come here, Mama. Come here. Um, you won't have a problem. They're pretty quiet. At first, they may make some sound just because they're in an area that they don't want to be in, but the older ones is super easy. They go right into the little soft carrier, totally quiet. If you do a layover, take the dog out, go to the bathroom, put a pee pad down, teach them to pee there, um, they're fine. I have trouble with even a large standard in a small carry-on bag, no problem. When's the next ultrasound video? You know, that's funny because I was just thinking we should do that on Cessna because um, we haven't done that in a while. And we, we actually have done ultrasound, but um, we didn't film it. It's just the more we do, obviously, the better for us and the more we're gonna learn. Um, so we did do ultrasound um, right before 
Simon was going to have her puppy, I think. But anyways, I don't know, maybe soon because I want to do Cessna. What is the personality of your black and white girl with brown eyes? Cessna? The one that's pregnant? Uh, no. Or the little talked puppy. about that. I think bef you talked about that before the puppy. So. I mean, before Cessna. So we're talking about these little girls. Um, it's really hard to, with, without me sitting here filming and watching them, it's hard for me to just sit at one um, spot and watch one particular puppy right now because that's not what I was working on. When I work on doing puppy offers and when I work on the video is when I really am able to just spend the time to see how they're developing. Um, and it's really hard because right now they're all asleep. So I don't have an answer for you. Um, I see them all the time playing with each other, um, but it's also hard because these two look so much alike. So what, when I do the video, if you're on our waiting list, when I do the video, um, I will put collars on them so that we can tell who's who, because you won't be able to tell who's who. I can't, I have to look at their face. Really close. Do they talk a lot at night? Will they keep you up? Only whenever you're um, first learning um, the crate training, then afterwards, no. They're quiet all night long. Um, it's just in the very beginning when they've left their family, they've left their parents, they left their siblings, and we put them in a crate and they hate it. But they'll get over it. Everyone here sits all night, quiet, just no sound. Till around 5, 5.30. Sometimes 6 if we're lucky. Sometimes 6, you're right. Would you do a labor delivery video? Uh, probably not. Um, well, not a live. Let me back up. I, I would do a labor video, um, just not live, just because things happen and I can't get it off of live if it goes live and there's some drama going on or emergency situation. Um, but I have a lot of footage of birth already and so I have a question for how many people are on? Uh, 69. Okay, out of 69 people, hopefully you guys are all listening right now. Do we have anybody on here that does film editing? Do we have anybody on here who does any YouTube stuff who can teach me? <laughs> That's what I need help with. I need help with this stuff because I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. Um, I'm learning and I'll buy anything you guys tell me to buy but I don't know really what the fastest way is to edit. And so, of course, my days are always so busy we already. We got one. And so, I awesome. I have to do everything else, and now YouTube is an additional thing for me that I don't know what I'm doing on, so it takes me a really long time to edit a video. So I have tons and tons of footage, but editing that video takes me a long time. Um, and so if I can learn, how to do it, I can get you guys more videos faster. Because I don't just sit in front of a camera and talk, right? Like, I want to share with you guys, like, real footage of the dogs doing the things that we're talking about. And so, um, if it was just me sitting in front of a camera and talking, it would be easy. But I don't feel like that's as engaging. And, like, that's kind of boring. Who wants to, you guys already see me every week. <laughs> um, so I want those videos to be really action videos of the dogs and of the, the topic that we're talking about, which makes it a little more difficult for me to just produce a video after a video because I have to film dogs doing what I need them to do. Um, but if I have anybody that knows how to do this stuff that can help me, please, please, please tell me, help me. And then I can get you guys more videos. So the question is, can I do a video of birth? Yes. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, huh? Especially it's hard right now because of the puppies and I do a video for the puppy offers, so I have to get that film edit and then doing the puppy offers and the puppies are growing. So now obviously they're a lot more work. So when they're this age, they're peeing and pooping everywhere and they <laughs> want us all the time. So it's harder. Somebody brought up um, the GoPro and the back harness. I And we do have the GoPro and we have a 360 GoPro. That, that was one of my things on my list. Thank you for bringing that up. 
Um, we have a GoPro 360. So it has the 360, two cameras really, one on the front, one on the back. And it films in 360 degrees. So hopefully you guys all saw the one or, I think we did two videos um, with 360. And you literally can just swipe your screen on your phone and you can see in front of you and behind you, which is super, super cool. Um, however, I had to pay somebody to edit those videos because I don't know how to do it. So I went out and bought this fancy camera. I don't know what I'm doing. So that's why I haven't done anymore. But we do have two harnesses and we have like three or four GoPros, literally. What, what am I gonna do with all the film? <laughs> and we do have a video up on YouTube already of that's uh, what I think somebody's talking about. We it was do. it was the the dumbest video ever. I think it was probably like one of the first videos we posted it was, on YouTube. It was very short and it was of Rue running around <laughs> in the backyard chasing Ethan. Mm -hmm. With the GoPro on her. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have all of that stuff. And if you guys want to see more of the 360 video footage, um, let me know because that was really fun. I thought that that was a really cool video idea. I just don't know how to edit them, so I have to pay somebody every time. <laughs> so hopefully that person that says they know how to do some of this stuff will be able to teach me that stuff and then maybe they'll come work for me and they can edit all of our videos. <laughs> well, we have I, no questions right okay, now. Okay, perfect. So why don't we do this? Why don't we have a little intro? Do, do, do. And potty break for whoever's watching, and we'll give out the baby babies. Um, All right. So that way everybody can see them. You guys want to go take a nap? You guys are all sleepy heads, anyways. Can I just hand you them right here, babe? Yes. All right, come here. I don't know if you guys can see Duke. Can they see him right there? Yeah. <laughs> He's been there for like an hour. Hey, Papa. Hey. What you doing? Are you sleepy? Don't you mean Hulk? Yeah. What, what you said Duke. Did I? <laughs> yeah. You're not Duke. Um, I did, didn't I? Yeah. Why did I say Duke? You look like a Duke. I, guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. See, this is convenient now that we move down here. Okay. Um, <laughs> They're all just standing in here like, what happened? Come here, mommy. So for you guys watching, remember I said the two blacks like are identical? Like, look at them. Very, very, very similar. Hmm. You're like, okay, we're gonna sleep. Yeah, just don't, that's fine. Just put yeah, that's fine. Giant. Giant babies. Oh yeah, they got eyeballs. Mm-hmm, they got eyeballs. They got eyeballs. I'll put them up close to you guys in a second. Let me just set them down for a minute and then get the others. Those two puppies are Rue's puppies. So Rue and Trout. And they're both boys. Started pooping, so she's got really? to clean the mess. 
Do you want these or are you going to get the other? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I can, I don't know. I need something. Can that go in here? No, I didn't realize. Is that for this one? No, it's this one. Okay. Hi, Angela. Hi, hi, let's see. All right. So she's getting that one cleaned up. So we are going to show you. Okay, so this is a great comparison. So we have one week old, two week old. Isn't that crazy, guys? Look how fast they grow. Um, I weighed these guys. And is this the girl? No, this is the boy. You have the girl. So the girl's 15 ounces. Um, this boy is one pound, and she's one pound three ounces. And these two are two, two pounds. He's two pounds, and he's 2.4 pounds. So you can see the difference. <laughs> Hi, handsome. Um... For those of you guys that know what Rue looks like, she's gray, dark gray. She's dark gray, and when she was little, she looked identical to this. So she stamped these puppies. I'm gonna come close so you can see. I cleaned her. Oh, hold on. Lexus isn't right here, so hopefully you guys can see that. So when I look at Rue's puppy pictures, this is exactly what she looked like. And that white line right there, um, she had the same exact thing, and now she barely, I don't even think you can see it at all because it closed up. Um, but he's the inside. And with the lights, you probably could see his eyes. And then... He is almost exactly the same, but a little bit lighter. And so you could see. So hopefully you guys could see how blue their eyes are. And that's how I could tell. Like they're very, very, very blue. What are you doing? <laughs> you licking the air? They're barking at the neighbors, I think. Oh, yeah. Let's go back to you again. See your eyes. Hopefully, hey, can you tell me, can someone tell me by the camera if that looks like I can, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. They can see good? Yeah. You can't really see eye color. No. But you can <laughs> see that they're open. It just got dark up there. <laughs> it did? Yeah. Yeah, because the light's Okay, so let's see. My little two pounders. Real quick, what can I put on this? Nothing. Um, the yeah, the um, the the awesome spray. Oh, is that in the under the room? under the sink in the bathroom? I'm in the laundry. Okay. All right. And then this is one of Bella's little girls. Hopefully you guys can see her. She's the biggest one. No, not Bella. I said Bella. One of Lily's. This is Lily's boy. He's very, very pretty. Oh. And then little Missy way over here. Come here, mommy. What happened? And then the tiniest one. And she's a girl. Hmm. Um, Alexis is cleaning up puppy poop. So <laughs> of course it I, had to happen. I can't, um, I can't see your guys' questions right now. Hold but on. She will be there in a second. I think it's okay for now. I guess you have to come up and get water. 
washed. I guess I could sit up here so we could keep you guys warm. Oh, okay. Um, of the ending of the video to take the take a puppy home it looked like you guys use a drone to film off them driving yeah we did but I didn't do that I don't know how to do that <laughs> but yes that was a drone we have a drone that's why I need a film editor well everybody's saying our videos look great okay <laughs> it only takes me like five days to do it, but part of it too is because I'm busy and I don't, if I, if that was all I had to do and I didn't have to raise a family and raise puppies and take care of dogs and spend time and groom and go to vets and deal with emails, um, then I could probably do them a lot faster because I would have the time to learn it a lot faster. But that's the new babies. Um... And then we can, um, what time is it? We can mm -hmm. probably... 7.22. Okay. So what we can do is see if there's any questions. And then if not, they got to see these guys, then um, we can let the crew all in here. Um, and so they could see the, the other dogs. We have no questions. Yes. Oh. Oh, the, um, the bed. Somebody's asking where you got that bed. This bed I got at Petco, but it's old. Um, so they might not have this, this coloring, but this was from Petco. That's about it. Okay. I did buy some toys um, for the dogs, which we'll show you. I bought a lot of fun things. Let's see. This did not last long. I should have left the tags so I could tell you what it is. This ball has the little crinkly sound inside like the water bottle. Um, the dogs, they love water bottles. They love to just chew on a water bottle. And so this, <laughs> they love that because it makes us sound, but it's a little better because they can't just get right to the water bottle and destroy it and eat plastic and then this ball is awesome for Simba because it I put his dog food in here <laughs> so Simba's my fast eater literally he will scarf down everything and I'm worried about him getting bloat um, so I feed him with a slow feeder or um, just recently I bought him this so I'll put all of his dog food in here and he has to squeeze and roll it around to get his food out which is kind of fun to watch him do um, and that was pretty Where did you get the water bottle ball? Petco. I honestly, I, I go to Petco all of the time and it's not always the cheapest, um, but I can look at stuff and see, oh, and get a good idea about something. So that was a Petco. And um, there also got these from Petco. Playology, which is, a, there's a whole line of Playology bones and toys and um, they're infused with scent, different flavoring, and it's supposed to keep them occupied and entertained for a lot longer um, because of the senses. They like that. But I haven't given them, we bought a big, big, big Kong wobbler, and I haven't given them that yet, because like I told you before, they get bored, right? They get bored of the same old toys, and so, if I give them everything all at the same time, then nothing's new to them and then they get bored. So we kind of save things for later, but I bought the big wobbler. Um, we'll see how they do that. And then I bought them the Kong. Let's see if I can scoot them over here. Do you want me to grab it? I think I do. This is the Kong Babbler. They actually really like this toy. It makes weird sounds and they pounce on it and it rolls 
and um, they bite it, and then it's pretty durable, really, really durable, but it's like $30, this thing, but they like it. <laughs> Do you want the big Kong? Yeah, oh, somebody can show them, that's a good idea. And then, oh, a new uh, dog baby toy. There's that one too. Oh yeah, this one I did get from Petco too. So a lot of these toys, you guys asked earlier um, if they're toddler toys, baby toys, and they are. But I found this one at Petco and it's perfect to hang and it's it's actually a, um, a puppy toy. And so I was like, ooh, because this reminds me of all the little toddler stuff. So I bought them this the other day too. But um, if I leave that in here, Simba will destroy it. So I'm gonna throw it at you. That you can't throw. <laughs> Look at this big old beast. Okay, so this is a Kong wobbler. And it you put the treats or their food in here. And can they see right there? Yeah, right? Nope. No? Can they see the puppies? Yep. Huh. All right. So, and so um, this, of course, has the thing on it right now, but they have to, they have to knock it over to get the food out of here or the treats out of here. So this is very entertaining. It'll keep them busy for a long time and um, you twist it to open it and that's how you fill it. And then... It'll keep them busy. Oh, and the bottom part is full of like something heavy, some sand or something, so that the base stays down, which is pretty cool. So, those are the new toys that, that you get to play with as time goes by. All right. Um, this is what they do on the tire. They literally just sleep, 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 sleep. So you can see how they all go inside the corners of the bed because it's nice and warm and fuzzy. I have some questions. Okay. What size is the crate behind you and is it too big for an eight week old pup? It is too big for an eight week old puppy. I would um, go probably two sizes big, smaller than that. And that is a 20, uh, 27. Um, hey Lex, hand me the tape measure. I'll just, I'll tell you, because I don't know off the top of my head. Um, the second drawer. Uh, I want to say it's a 27 or something. Yes. Okay, so it's 27 by... 27 by 21 by, tw by 20. So that's too big. You want to go with, can you help me that crate? That little crate right there? Yeah. When you're crate training a puppy and potty training for nighttime, you want something small like this because you don't want them to potty in it. And the bigger it is, the easier it is going to be for them to potty. Come here. I know what you're going to do. You're going to pee. Pee over here. Um, so I'm going to show you with, with little Nava that I think she's going to go pee. So I want her to go potty first. Um, of course, she's not eight weeks yet. She's five, six, almost, almost six. You're not going to pee. Okay, thanks. So this is a perfect size, and I'll give you the measurement of this in a minute, but you want it small. You want it literally just small enough so they can go in, they can stand up, they can spin around. Can they see that? Yep. And uh, I think she's going to go potty. Um, because otherwise, hey, yeah, you see the crate? Um, otherwise, you're just going to have a mess. Okay, so this is 22 by 12 high by 13. So it's really, really small. And this is perfect. 
You don't want it too big. I don't like the metal crates um, for new puppies and crate training because they're really open and they're not den-like. Um, and they're not easy to take from room to room. And that's why we use the plastic ones because they like them to be den-like. So that's the perfect size for an eight week old puppy. Keep in mind, an eight week old puppy is going to outgrow that, right? Like they're not gonna be able to stay in that for a very long time, but it's a $30 crate. So it's only a $30 crate. You can use it for a good, probably four or five months at least um, before you have to upgrade. What are you doing? What do you smell? Do you want water? And then um, it's just convenient because you can take it up to your room and put it on your nightstand and then you can still put it in your car and go to the vets, wherever you're going, it's easy. Have you ever tried the puzzle feeder toys they're the ones where they move the parts to reveal the food Do yeah you like those um yes um but i have a dog named simba who's very destructive he breaks everything off but yes and we actually have some puppy owners that um sent some videos up and they learn really fast and they keep them busy too so those are also um really good ideas and don't don't worry guys, I do have it on my list to make you guys a video of all of the different um, enrichment. I Why knew did you, you go were gonna, pee? I knew you were gonna do that. Why you pee on the blanket? Huh, why? You're supposed to pee over there. Um, so I do have a list to make you guys a video. Don't, don't go in there, those babies are tiny. <laughs> Have you updated your suggested supplies list? Um, just a few things, but I haven't really updated it too much. Um, but a few things I have. For the most part, it's been the same. I, I did change the pen because now I love the new pens from Petco. And um, I think I, I added some of the different sizes for the crates and things, but um, for the most part, that's it. I do need to update that because I would like to put the, the choke chain on there for you guys in case you guys are interested in that because that way you'll at least see the name, um, what it's called, so you can search for one if you don't like those or the martingales. And I also have another thing I need to put on to my website, which is I made a eight or I actually, I think it's 10 pages. Sorry, I'm not looking at you guys, but I have to keep an eye on her because she's never seen these little puppies um, on potty training. So it's a whole potty training cheat sheet and it's a bunch of information. And in addition to the video we made, so that in combination. So I need to put that online too. Hopefully I'll get some free time. Um, um, do, you, do you recommend the dog toys with squeakers in them, the fluffy ones with the small squeaker inside, or do I get a rubber toy for a baby, which is safest? Um, you're gonna want both. We definitely recommend a lot of different types of toys, and they're used for different purposes. So some are more for teething, um, some are more for just entertainment, some are for soothing, comforting. Um, so they serve a lot of different purposes. Yeah, she wants in the bed. She's like, this is my bed. Come here. Um, and so you're going to want a bunch of things, not just one specific kind. Uh, you just want to keep an eye on your puppy to make sure that they don't destroy it, eat the squeaker, um, destroy the rubber. So like, for example, this toy that I just bought. Nimba's, Nimba. <laughs> Simba is my destructive, destructive chewer. I just bought this and you can already see the purple is being chewed off. So can they see that? Uh, yes. Um, so of course now I have to watch him with this because he is going to get through this really, really hard rubber. But, oh, and this is another, like this toy is a toddler toy. So it's a kid's Baby toy. toy. It's not made for dogs, but I love the crinkle. The crinkle sound, they love it. The problem with this toy is that it has little rubber feet. 
So look at the little rubber feet now. <laughs> because anytime I have the, these are made for the babies and not for Simba. Um, and anytime he comes in, that's the first thing he does is start destroying their toys. So you just have to be aware of that stuff. Um, do we want to let Simba and Nala in? Hi. Um, well, room, I have, hi mommy. I have a few questions still. Okay. Do they ever get bored of people and want to be alone for a while? I mean, yeah, they definitely go in their crates and they will, as they grow up, they're going to want their crate time. So I wouldn't say they get bored of people, but they're going to get tired. And a lot of times they want that crate. They want to just be left alone, especially if you have a busy household um, and they want that space. So for sure, that's one of the reasons why we always say crate train your dog because they, want, they need a space to go to. Like we have a bedroom. Our kids have a bedroom. We have our space. Um, they should have theirs as well. So that way, if they don't want to be bothered, they can just go take the nap. Um, how much food would you put in the wobbler? Um, well, in addition to their meals. It's going to depend on the dog and the size of the dog. And I, that is made for treats or dog food. I won't put um, treats in there because that's, I bought the big one um, because I thought we have multiple dogs. It'll be more fun for them to be able to play in it but i wouldn't put treats because we don't want them to get full on treats so if it was for simba and nala i'd probably put a half a cup in there um it'll just depend like if they've already eaten how much they've eaten so it'll just be different for every dog another thing you could do because it has the little hole is you you could really mess with them and put <laughs> something in there that's maybe a little bit bigger and make them really work to try to get it out. Like their kibble's gonna be small. That's why I haven't done it yet because I'm like, okay, if I just put their kibble, it'll probably come out pretty easily. But um, we'll see. I don't know. I'll probably put kibble just to see what it does. But I could also put like some peanut butter um, or cream cheese inside of it to make them lick it and really want to get it. Hi, mommy. Um... Okay, well, I guess we could bring the dogs in. Okay. I'll, I'll leave off right here. Okay. Because how long do we have now? We are long. at 7.38. We have about 20 minutes. Off. Okay. So we'll grab the babies and put them away. Um, really fast. And then let them come in here. I, the only thing I don't know, Lex, is we'll have to test this. Um, Diamond has not let this puppy be around anybody. So, when I say anybody, any other dogs. So we'll have to see how Diamond does with her because she really thinks she has a one-week-old puppy that she's got to protect. A one-week-old? Yeah, she thinks that it's a one-week-old. <laughs> like, her puppy should be one-week-old. questions after okay um are the, you i see a delay on yours as it it's always delayed huh. your your phone camera is very different mm -hmm. than what you actually see on youtube yeah like it says it's live but it's really like a couple seconds later gotcha you realize they're gonna have to come over that. That'll yeah. be fun. Yes. Don't you pee on my seat. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Here, let's put these, we'll put these in here for the breaths. And I gotta put this away because we don't want them to have that toy yet. Okay. I'm gonna put the soft food in here for them whenever they come in. Are you ready? Fun. Yeah, you can let them in, but I'm just gonna. Hey. Hi, mommy. You smell food, huh? But you're pretty in school. You don't need to eat. No. Um, I'm putting the leftover food that was <laughs> puppies in here. Hi, mama. Hey, 
doesn't know you have her. doesn't know I have her. She hasn't figured that out. All right. <laughs> I put the wet food in there, the soft. Now she knows. Now you know I have your baby. Hi, mom. Oh. That thing always wants to fall. Oh, I have. Thank you, mommy. Thank you. Thank you. So it's a small plastic crate, and um, it has to have, um, uh, it has to be hard, it can't be collapsible, and so it's going to be one like that. Um, what is the best bedding for inside of the crate? Um, when the puppy is really small at eight weeks, you got to remember they might have accidents, so you don't want to spend too much on it, but it, it could be diamond. <laughs> Anything from a little baby blanket. I buy baby blankets a lot for their crates. Um, and even in here sometimes whenever they're small. Because I can find them really cheap a lot of times. Cheaper than puppy stuff. But a lot of times, baby stuff is cheaper than puppy stuff. Not Simba. Like... What? His butt was right in front of the screen. He's trying to get it. Um, so any, even a towel. Because you got to remember they're going to have accidents. So a little towel, a little baby blanket. Not too thick because they're going to pee in it and you're going to have to wash it. Um, can you please put the purple and green ball on the... On a, the list. Oh, on the list? Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Somebody's too interested in that. Food. Oh, see? I hope you guys saw it. He got food out. So this keeps him entertained and he yeah, can't. Yeah, can see it on here. He rolled it. I don't know if they, hopefully they can see it. So this is fun for him, huh? Hey, handsome. <laughs> um, I see you. I see you. Do your Kwikai enjoy playing fetch? What is their favorite exercise activities with you? Um, they love to play fetch. They love to just chase all of us around. They love to go on walks, um, but their favorite thing of all is this. Do not, you're going to get her mad. That's her baby and she's going to get mad at you. Um, their favorite thing of all is just being with us. They don't care what, just being with us. Don't forget the trampoline. And the trampoline. They do love the trampoline. These dogs love to be on that trampoline. Um, we have to move the... Uh, the trampoline away from the little retaining wall because um, they jump up there and especially when the girls were pregnant we didn't want them to jump down from there so um, we have to move it away from the retaining wall i have something that i can share with you guys for those of you who are going to have a female puppy or already do have a female puppy and maybe you've never experienced a female going into season and how to know they're going into season because Nala is in season 
Um, she's just in the beginning stages of it, so right now I can keep her and Simba together, but not for long, uh, because he's going to want to breed to her. And that can't happen. But I'm going to show you guys something, and if kids are watching and you don't want them to see, then just uh, turn it for a second. But you'll start to see that their vulva gets swollen, and they're constantly licking themselves down there. And so you can see, hopefully, Simba's going to be like, oh yeah, I see. So she's, it's getting a little pink and swollen, and now she's got little mucusy stuff all coming out, and eventually that's going to be blood, and um, that's why she's licking herself constantly. So while she was sitting there, she started licking, so I thought, oh, that's a good thing. I can show you guys. So it'll get a little more swollen, and then it'll start to get darker and darker, and then she'll stop bleeding. Um, but literally, when a female is in season, they actually bleed, and... If they're not super clean, they can leave spots on your furniture, on your floor, um, in their crates. And so I thought that was a good thing to um, show you guys because not everybody knows. So as you can see, she's just cleaning, 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 constantly cleaning. Simba's still trying to get food out of his bowl. Um, when do they start to calm down and age? Um, usually two and a half, three years old is when they're really just calm and mellow. Um, it also depends on, guys, stay away from her. She's going to get mad. She's going to get mad. Hey, Lex. Um, yeah, I see you. <laughs> so Diamond is getting very protective. If you guys saw, like, the puppy is nursing on her and she keeps, like, putting her head over, like, uh, uh, stay away, stay away. So I'm gonna put her in the other room so she doesn't get, um, I don't want her to nip at the, the other dogs here. Come on, Diamond, go, go, Diamond. Come here, Mama, right here. So Diamond um, Come on. loves being a mom and she wants to be a mom to everybody. But I just saw her behavior and so of course I don't want her to, um, get mad and snap at Nala, or accidentally hurt the puppy because she's snapping at Nala or Simba. So I just thought I would interrupt there. Um, so if you only have, back to your question, if you only have one or even two dogs, it's less chaotic for you guys because we have so many and we always have puppies and it's always craziness. Um, but whenever we have a long time with just one of the dogs and they're one and a half, two years old, they're super mellow. They calm down. They want to just lay down and relax. Um, but when there's so much going on, <laughs> then they're like little spazzes. Um, Nala's the youngest of everyone here and she's definitely um, pretty spazzy. You know? Hey, Nala. Can we tell who is who? This is when all the adults came in. Oh, so uh, the little tiny one is Nala. The biggest gray is Simba. Um, the darker gray that was in here a minute ago, but she went to go be with her puppies is Rue. And then the black and white is Diamond. Um, so not, not all of our dogs will get along with each other, and so we can't have everybody um, in, especially if somebody's in season or somebody has new puppies, which is why I, you saw me with Diamond and put her away. Um, so just going crazy. I know. He loves that ball. Um, so not everyone is always running together because we can't. This is part of life whenever you're a breeder is that you deal with that. Nala. Nala. Come here. Nala is my little lover. She loves Mama. Huh? Are you going to breed Nala? Yeah, we were just talking about that. You know, she's over a year old. Um, I just don't know if I want to breed her yet because she's pretty small. I haven't decided. Um, she will be bred at some point, but I don't know if I want to do it yet. I know we talked about this, but it's the only question. <laughs> what happened with Diamond's pup? Um, so we did talk about that a little while ago, and um, unfortunately, I didn't want to talk about it last week. It was just too fresh.
too new for us, um, but Diamond's puppy didn't make it. She died um, within 24 hours. And so that was pretty traumatic for Diamond because she's never, <laughs> somebody's getting it all up. Um, she's never lost a puppy like that and not had any. She only had one puppy to begin with. And she was mourning really badly, really, really badly. Um, but that's what happened to her puppy. And um, as far as like what happens, so just as part of a general rule, puppies don't always survive. Like they can be born and appear healthy. Like that puppy looked healthy. You guys saw her on the live stream. She appeared healthy. She looked good. She was nursing. Um, but within 24 hours, she was very weak. She wouldn't nurse. Um, Diamond kept trying to push her close to keep her warm. And so some puppies just fade. You keep you, hitting the camera, You buddy. keep hitting the camera. Come over here. Ready? Papa. Ready? Let's go. Um, it's called fading puppy syndrome. And so that's what happened. She um, just faded. So there's some, maybe something was wrong internally. And um, we just don't know. We just never know. So that's what happened. And so we got them and a new puppy. Are Nala and Simba related? Yes. Um, they are related. Not super close, but they are related. Um, I wouldn't breed them together for a couple reasons. Simba's uh, a lot bigger than her. And um, he got another one. Rue. Um, so I wouldn't no. breed somebody that small to somebody that big. No. But they're related anyway, so that'll never happen. No. Hello. Will the light gray puppies turn a darker gray as adults? I hope you don't knock that camera down, kiddo. Come here. Come here, Papa. Um, the, the light gray, Jeez. like... Um, Hulk, he is going to be a little bit darker than Simba most likely. So when they're really light gray and they have the little tan color, um, then that'll most of that'll all go away and they'll look more like Simba. Simba, come here, come on. Ruth, um, I'm gonna get him over here so we can see. Oh, well, she's going crazy. As well. Come here, Ruth. And then um, you'll see from like Ruth's puppies how dark. Um, her one puppy is, that puppy is going to look just like her. Just like her. Hi. Can you calm down? Come here. Come here. Come here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What do you see? What do you see? Is there food? Here. Let's see. I'll show you guys that Nala barks about speaking up for everything. Hold on. Let me get you guys a treat. Wait. <laughs> okay, calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Did you see that? Like, they sat, but she's gonna bark. Yeah, and she's doing her high five. Okay, relax. Okay, Simba, you're gonna hurt her. Sit. Speak. 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 <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's landed on her. I know, I saw it. Simba, come How high can they jump? Um, well, Rue can jump a four, Rue can hop over a four foot, um, a four foot little gate. Simba is, I wonder how tall our grooming table is. Simba is very, um, he's big, he's big standard, but he's clumsy. I, I don't think they can see my face, right? No. Sit, 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 speak, speak. Oh my lord. Now you're not gonna do it, now you're not gonna do it. Um, so Rue um, can clear that. Simba can because he's big enough, however, he doesn't. But the other day he surprised me and he went from the ground up to the top of the grooming table with 
Like he didn't run and he just from the ground just leaped up onto the grooming table <laughs> with all four feet. Um, which was a very big surprise because he doesn't even, like even our little 30 inch gate right here, he never tops it. Um, Rue does all the time. So every dog is different. Just because they're big doesn't mean that it's for sure they're going to hop over something um, or learn to. And then Nala is very springy, but she doesn't jump over anything. She just jumps straight up in the air. Simba does that most of the time too. Yeah, Simba does that a lot. Come here, here. Right um, here. can you go over their sizes? These three. Yeah, look. Why don't we do this? So we have my little. I'll move this real fast. Can they see that or no? Yes. Come here. Come here. All right, so Rue and um, Simba are standards, and hopefully they all don't stand there. So I want you to see. Can I see that? Yeah. Okay, so the way the measurements is, it is from the ground to the top of their shoulders. So wherever that is. So what I did is I did a stencil, and I made this from the ground up so that I know where the heights are, and then I'm able to see. Come here, Dolly. No. I don't want you to get I already made you. I already did you. I got I did you. Come on, Dolly. Okay. And of course it needs to be flat, right? So, um, and I usually would have more space, but it's harder for me because I don't have all of that. So whenever you're getting their height, you don't want their front feet to be like a pyramid, right? You need them to be straight under them so that you get the right height. Do you want to come out no. or do you want to go in? No. And then... I put this in my hand. You'll see that she's barely, barely a mini. So a, a toy is 13 and under, and she's barely over the top of the toy, which makes her a miniature. And um, Simba, come here, come here. No, 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 no. We're just going to get your height real fast. Come on. So again, you want them to... Can you stand? I don't have a treat in my hand. So obviously, the way he's standing right now is wrong. You don't want his back legs and his front legs to be all over the place because you can't get a good height. And because there's a wall there um, next to him, he doesn't know what he's doing. Come here. Let me get him a treat. He's uh, almost, he's like um, 16 and three quarters inches tall now. And if your dog won't stand for you, and obviously you're not gonna have a stencil on your wall, all you're gonna do is put a pencil. Take a pencil. Oh. <laughs> see, treat motivated. Treat <laughs> motivated. You can see that so good on the camera. It's just either. So what you can do is, you're not gonna have a stencil on the wall. So you're gonna have a pencil and you're gonna hold, if you need two people to do it, you're gonna put the pencil on above their shoulder blades and mark the wall and then go from the ground up. And, um, and then you can see what his height is. Okay. I'm getting him to calm down for a second because he's like, I don't wanna be over there. Nope. He's not going to do it. He's like, would you quit touching my privates? I don't need to see that. Okay. Usually, I would be over there. Oh, and that's a pretty boy. Oh, now it's a pretty boy. Sit. No, let's sit. No, no, let's sit. Sit. No, let's sit. Sit. 
She's doing high five. Good job. 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 So right now we're working with Simba on um, not just sit, but leave it, and he'll stay. How long he has to stay, and he can't touch the treat. <laughs> hey. Uh, 801. Oh. Do we have any questions before we say goodbye? Uh, yes. What age are they full grown approximately? Um, so full grown is in height is usually between 10 and 12 months. And full grown as in maturity and thickness, usually around one and a half, maybe even two, but usually one and a half. Um, so like Simba is almost one and a half. He'll be one and a half this month. And so look at how nice and thick he is now. Um, he looks really handsome and he's filled out a lot. So he's done. Um, Nala's not done yet. She'll grow a little bit more. Not in height, but just in thickness. Um, sit. We're not doing pop. Sit. Sit. <laughs> Simba's learning. He's like, she was doing it and getting cheated. Yeah, exactly. So she teaches him bad habits. Um, no. Simba. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Ah, ah. No. Sit. Leave it. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. So it's just like a few seconds at a time just to teach him that it's okay. Is the door? No, that was Ethan coming down oh. the stairs. A um, few seconds. And then increase it, increase it, increase it. Simba, are we ready to say goodbye? Are we ready? No more, right? Nope. All right. Until next time, guys. Thank you guys so much. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. Simba, say bye.